The girl was stripped naked and lying on the grass. The man next to her was content to put on his pants. At that moment the girl's cell phone rang, it was her mother calling. The man picked up the phone and looked at it directly to hang up, and then admired the girl's beautiful body, threatened the girl and said if you dare to call the police, I will go to kill your deaf mother. Speaking of the girl's mother, the man suddenly thought of something. <laughs> Just then the girl's mother was looking for her everywhere. He got up and walked towards the girl's mother. Tears slipped from the corners of the girl's eyes. Seeing this beast is going to do to her mother, the girl used all her strength to pick up the stone beside her. She rushed towards the man and hit him on the head. She knocked him to the ground and then hit his head like crazy, smashed many times, until the man's face was completely disfigured and turned into a puddle of mud, despite the girl's heartbreaking screams. However, not far from the mother is a deaf mute. Such a big noise did not find her. Soon the girl was arrested and taken to the police station. The interrogation the investigating police officer said that since the man had been killed, in the middle of nowhere, there were no eyewitnesses. It was impossible to determine whether it was self-defense or murder. It is also impossible to determine whether the girl was violently sexually assaulted by a man, or whether the two were in love and consensual. Or maybe the girl went out with a prostitute. The other party did not pay so they killed her. Even the lawyer said that even if it was self-defense, you have to prove that you have been violently assaulted. Now the man is dead. The girl's story is the only one. There is no chance of winning in court. The lawyer advised the girl to disclose her story. Story. Seek the help of the Women's Protection Association. But the girl shook her head no. She grew up with a deaf mother. She had suffered enough discrimination and cold eyes from others. If people knew that she had been raped and killed someone, then people around her would talk about her mother even more. How could she live alone in the future? So she suffered alone. The girl remained silent during the whole interrogation, until the arrival of her mother. She finally couldn't help crying out, but not out of fear. But she couldn't let go of her mother. She used sign language to tell her mother that while she was away, don't trust others easily. There are many bad people in this world. It was soon the day of the court sentencing. Since there was no surveillance at the scene, the fact of violent assault is not clear. The girl smashed her opponent's head to a bloody pulp. It was an act of revenge. The girl could not be considered as self-defense. The court sentenced the girl to five years in prison. The mother could not hear what the judge said, asked her daughter's classmates next to her to know the sentence of five years. Seeing her daughter about to be taken away, she rushed like crazy to stop her, even kneeled down to beg the judge to re-sentence. Maybe only a parent would do this for their children, but it didn't help. She rushed to stop again and hugged her daughter. Mother and daughter cried their hearts out. But what's the point? In the end, the girl was taken to the border, to a strange place. She put on a prison uniform and put on the number 2037, sentenced to five years in prison. Just entered the prison and accidentally touched the girl with short hair. The other party was beaten up. Luckily, some roommates pulled the girl away. She was assigned to this small room. However, the place is not as scary as expected. On the contrary, they took special care of her. Not only did they give her better toiletries, she was also given food that she normally couldn't eat. The girl was very touched. During the meal, she heard that she could work in the prison. She could even get a salary. So the next day, she followed her cellmate to the garage to work. For the sake of her mother's well-being, she didn't complain about the hardships she had to endure. After working all day, she was ready to go back to the prison. The girl suddenly asked the guards when to get the money. This comment made the guards laugh. She said, do you think this is outside? The result was scolded by the guards. Back to the cell. The girl did not eat and sat in the corner until late at night. Suddenly, Susan came over to comfort her. She told her a story about herself. Susan is a prisoner on death row. Sometimes she can't think straight. She is also a poor person. After Susan's guidance, the girl gradually became more and more cheerful. She began to write letters to her mother. Every day, she cleaned the small room. The inmates looked at this girl. They were amused and wondered what she was thinking. She went to work with her cellmates every day. When she returned to her cell, she helped her cellmates. This day, her mother finally got her first visit. She practiced smiling over and over again in the bathroom in front of the mirror. She was able to say simple words after trying to speak. She tried her best to show her daughter that she was doing well on the outside. But when her daughter came out of the bathroom with a smile on her face. The mother couldn't help but cry. Seeing her mother speak simple words, the girl was very happy. She taught her mother to speak on the spot. As she spoke, her mother cried even more. At this moment, the girl could no longer hold back. Tears came out in a gush. Mother and daughter cried through the glass. Soon the visitation time was up. The mother reluctantly left. But that day, an accident happened. The girl suddenly fell to the ground with stomach pain, rushed to the infirmary. The test results were shocking. <laughs>
She is pregnant with the child of the rapist. The girl instantly lost her senses. She rushed out of the infirmary and ran straight to the playground to the prison gate. She wanted to go home. She wanted to find her mother. At this moment, she was so desperate and helpless. In the end, she was dragged back by the prison guards who came. She was locked up in a room by herself. The girl was lying on the floor crying. She didn't understand why fate had done this to her. At 19 years old, she could not bear all this. She rubbed her belly hard and did not want the baby. The next day, Susan asked to see the girl. She opened the door and saw the girl's stomach exposed. It was covered with nail scratches. Susan dressed her up, looked at the poor girl. She took her in her arms and comforted her to live well. At this moment, she treated the girl as her own child. Finally, she took the girl back to her cell. Her cellmates hurriedly laid out the blanket for her. The girl just lay there. She did not eat or drink for several days. Even her mother refused to see her when she came to visit. She didn't want her mother to know this or to be upset. The elder sister saw her like this and comforted her for several hours. Finally, she went out to have a break with some of her cellmates during the activity. However, the inmates were divided over the baby in her belly. Some felt that the baby was innocent and should be born. Others felt that the baby was the beast's. Having the baby would only add to the girl's suffering. She was only 19 years old and the baby would ruin her life. There was even a fight over the disagreement. But the girl seemed to have made up her mind. This day she took a break from work. She stabbed her stomach with a piece of broken glass. This scene was seen by her cellmate, the short-haired girl. She went up and gave her a beating. She had been abandoned by her parents since she was a child. She couldn't stand the thought of someone hurting her child. Luckily, the guards came and pulled her away. When she returned to her cell, her cellmates advised her not to hurt herself anymore. They suggested she could appeal to the court. A pregnancy would prove that she had been raped by the man who killed her. This could reduce her sentence and she could also apply for an abortion. With the encouragement of everyone, the girl filed an appeal. In the following days, the prison guards gave her easy work. She also stopped hurting herself. Every day she worked hard and faced life with optimism. Soon months passed and the good news came from the court. After the case was retried, the original five-year prison sentence was changed to one year. She hurriedly wrote a letter to her mother. The letter said that she would be able to go home to her mother in a few months. The mother was overjoyed to see this. But just as the girl applied to abort the baby, the accident came again. The examination revealed that her baby was already six months old. Korean law states that abortion is not allowed after six months of pregnancy. It is an illegal act. The girl was once again in despair. She went back to her cell and cried the whole night. Did she really have to give birth to that beast's child? Strangely enough, the next day the girl was no longer sad. Seeing her belly grow bigger and bigger every day, the warm-hearted inmates were with her every day. In order to make her happy, the inmates painted the toilet into a flowery world. Seeing the people around her treating her so well, seems to feel that the world in fact, the world is still very beautiful, but she could not forget the harm she had suffered. She often asked for painkillers at the infirmary on the pretext of having a headache, and then put them all in a bottle. In her free time, she wrote a letter to each of her cellmates. One day in the studio, she suddenly had a stomach ache. It looked like she was about to give birth. She crawled back to her cell and opened the bottle. Then she poured out all the pills inside and took them into her mouth. She stood up with severe pain and walked to the door. Then she put the letter she wrote to her cellmate in advance and stuck it on the door. After doing this, she had no more strength, finally collapsed to the ground. By the time her cellmates returned, she had already passed out, called for help, finally was rushed to the infirmary. In fact, the girl had already lost the desire to live. She had been preparing for this day for a long time. The doctor told her to push hard to give birth to the baby, but she refused to push. She didn't want the baby to be born at all. Later, she was taken to the hospital on medical parole, but she remained unconscious. When her mother learned of this, she rushed to the hospital. She was so anxious she didn't even care about her lost shoes. She rushed into the hospital. Her mother was devastated to see her daughter in such a state. At the end of the day, she bought her daughter's favorite pizza. She imagined that her daughter would be awake by the time she got back, but the reality was harsh. She stroked her daughter's face. In her heart, she prepared for the worst. She hoped that in her next life, her daughter would always be 15 years old and live happily ever after. The five inmates here also saw the letter written by the girl. At the end of the story, perhaps it is the call of mother's love, or perhaps it is the mercy of God. With the breeze blowing outside the window, the girl's fingers moved. She woke up. Soon five years have passed. A patch of colorful cosmos swaying in the wind. A little girl gently stroking the petals. It was the girl's child. She was adopted by a couple. The woman was her cellmate from the previous prison. They wanted their child to bloom and grow as beautifully as the flower. In a bright, clean room, the deaf mother is ironing her daughter's clothes. Next to her is a letter of acceptance to the civil service. The mother looked tenderly at the photo on it. At that moment, a daughter's call came from the door. Ma. This is a 2022 Korean drama called 2037. Do well to watch it if you finds it interesting. Highly recommended.